There is nowhere on the planet quite like Florence. Italy's most famous village is both grand and idyllic. The art is divine and the food is out of this world. Like most tourist destinations, there are many places to eat in Florence. So you're probably wondering what food does Florence do best? Which dishes reflect the actual culture and history? I'm Angel Castellanos, and like many Americans, I first visited Florence as a college student, and it's been a deep love affair since. I can guarantee you that trying certain foods in Florence will dramatically improve your travel experience. Florence was founded by the Romans in the first century and eventually became its own kingdom, which lasted until the 19th century. The wealthiest families in the Western world, like the Medici, lived here and bankrolled some of the greatest artists in history. A list of Florentine greats is full of more Hall of Famers than the 1927 Yankees. So that richness extended to the surrounding land and its produce. The cuisine of Florence and Tuscany is still reflective of that sumptuous landscape. I love eating my way through this city as much as I enjoy all of the great art and architecture. An easy way to sample some of the foods in this video is to join a tour guide food tour, which is led by a local. On this trip, Sean and I were together in Florence to drink and eat some of our favorite dishes. We listed the exact spots we tried below in the description, so be sure to check that out. Before getting into all of this great food of Florence, I wanted to remind you of a time-honored tradition that I love in Italy called aperitivo which is sitting down to enjoy a drink and snacks with some friends before a large meal. Florence is small enough, so it allows you plenty of opportunity for eating and drinking. I recommend that you take a moment to enjoy yourself and soak in the beauty of the city at a rooftop bar. One of my favorites is in the Oltro Arno in Santo Spirito. The Hotel Palazzo Guadagni has a fantastic bar called La Loggia. It's a terrace that overlooks Santo Spirito Square. You can enjoy libations in one of the former homes of the Medici while pretending you're a Roman patrician. Another good option, albeit a bit bougie, is the Sesto rooftop bar at the Weston Hotel. It's right on the river and has sweeping views of the whole city. <laughs> Conilio, rabbit. Something that is eaten frequently in Italy, but rarely in English speaking countries is rabbit. If prepared correctly, rabbit is a delicious dish and something you must definitely try when you're in Florence. My favorite way to have rabbit is coniglio frito, or fried rabbit. The rabbit is delicately fried in olive oil, creating a crispy crunch while maintaining the juicy flavors. For a modern take on the Florentine rabbit dish, head to Gurdulu. This is our rabbit rolle, rolling around his own interiors, served with crispy carrots, and then this four made mountain milk with the cooking stock of rabbit bones and served it with a bit of ginger. It's one of my favorite sustainable restaurants located in the Oltro Arno. Their French-inspired spin on rabbit left Sean and me very impressed. Mm, this is a rabbit. If you like pork, then a porchetta sandwich is a must-try street food. For me, it's my go-to quick lunch whenever I'm in Florence. It is moist, fresh, full of herbs, served in this super crusty Tuscan bread that makes a crunch every time you bite into it. The tradition of slow roasted pork served on crusty Tuscan bread goes back centuries. Like most Tuscan dishes, this is a simple combination packed with flavor. There are several places in the city to have a porchetta sandwich. Many are super famous and have incredibly long lines. But Sean and I like to go local and beat the crowds, so we head to Nerbone at the Mercato Centrale. The surrounding Tuscan countryside outside of Florence is one of the world's most prestigious wine producing regions. If you're a wine drinker, you can drink excellent wine every day at prices you will never find back home. The four big types of wine you should try when you're in Florence are Chianti and a nice Chianti. Dating back to 1398, 
Chianti is probably the most known wine in Italy to most people. Today, the wine region of Chianti is located about an hour south of Florence in the northern part of Tuscany. Vernaccia di San Gimignano Vernaccia is named after the grape and has been grown and produced most commonly near San Gimignano in Tuscany since the Renaissance. Vernaccia is usually an intense wine with a bouquet of saffron, flour, and honey. Vino Nobile de Multiple Chano This wine is named Nobile because it has been the prized wine of the nobility since the Middle Ages. The earliest record of wine in Multiple Chano is from the first century. Last but not least, we have Brunello di Montalcino. Brunello is a new kid on the block because it has only been produced since the 19th century, but now is a world-class wine. A good Brunello is a deep red powerful wine that will explode in your mouth. Not overly fruity, but has a fabulously floral smell. I love to learn about wine since it's part of the culture in Italy, so I recommend learning from waiters and sommeliers as much as you can. To step up your game, take a trip out of the city to visit vineyards and have a taste. The tour guide has an excellent day trip option deep into Tuscany that includes lunch. Papardelle a ragù di cinghiale Papardelle is a long, flat egg-based noodle, and this pasta is hearty and filling. Papardelle is often served with ragù. The most famous Florentine and Tuscan ragù is the ragù di cinghiale, a ragù made from wild boar. If you're a pork eater, you've come to the right place. I order this dish every time I'm in Florence, and it's easily one of my favorite dishes in Italy. This hearty pasta is full of the distinct flavors that only wild game can bring, and it's a must-try dish if you're visiting Florence. Tagliere. A tagliere is a beautiful medley of cured meats paired with cheeses served on a long cutting board. The word tagliere actually means cutting board. You can order one for yourself or share with someone else. All of the various thin slices of meat have a different taste and fat content. As casual as this dish is, you don't want to rush through it. It's ideal to order for a light lunch or an aperitivo before dinner. If you head to Via dei Neri, you will find plenty of enotecas to sit down and try this feast for both your eyes and mouth. Lampredotto. Are you an adventurous eater like I am? If so, you have to try Lampredotto. Lampredotto is cow entrails slowly cooked with some spices to hide the fact that you're eating the fourth stomach of a cow. It's the ultimate example of cucina povera, or the food of the humble people. Typically, a cow is slaughtered and quartered, and the best cuts go to the rich people. So all that remains are the innards and organs for everyone else. Lampredotto is likely the product of trying to get the most out of each animal to feed the general population when wealth and food were not in abundance. Today, it is a local favorite and solid street food. Lampredotto is usually a sandwich, and some say it's delicious while others cringe. After a long night, Sean and I rolled up to our favorite Lampredotto spot to get us back on our feet. So it's no surprise that we had some sound issues that morning. Stop it, so I'll let Sean take it from here. I was like, Angel, are you ready to eat some cow entrails? And Angel was like, of course, man, bring it on. We took a big bite and Angel starts asking me, the texture, the flavor, what do you think, Sean? You speechless, huh? Is this the best pinino you've ever had or what? I was surprised at how good the cow stomach could really turn out. It was definitely a great hangover cure and the perfect thing I needed before going to see Florence. Bisteca Fiorentina. The Bisteca Fiorentina is exactly what it sounds like, a Florentine steak. The cut of meat can be veal or from a heifer cattle, a cow that has not birthed a calf yet. Also, the steak has to be from a canina breed of cattle in Siena. Before ordering the steak, you should know that it is commonly served rare. Sorry, vegans. I love you anyway, though. Me too. So don't even bother insulting your waiter or the chef by asking to have your steak cooked medium or medium well. Like most Italian recipes, there is no fancy marinade or tricks to bring flavor to this dish. The flavor comes from the high quality of meat and salt brings that flavor forward. So adding salt and pepper is done after the meat is cooked. A Fiorentina is grilled over hot coals and there are no shortcuts. 
The steak is placed on the grill at room temperature to get that beautiful outer crust, bone in, just like an American T-bone. This dish is ideal for sharing with others unless you have a massive appetite for beef. Well, those are some of my favorite recommendations on the top things to eat in Florence. I love them all. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you want to be notified for our next video, don't forget to ring that bell. I'm Angel Castellanos. Happy travels. It's like you, we eat all the cow. Is cow dish? I should have never heard of it. Locked in? I think we're locked in.